So, sorry, I hope this is not. Um, what can Solution Focus learn from the Visa story? Visa, the biggest networked organization in the world. Visa, the biggest ever stock market launch in 2008, even without the European, Euro, European Union region of that company. Still the biggest stock market launch in America. And it was started by one man with a vision. There's a guy called D. Hock. And D. Hock was a bank manager. D. Hock was a bank manager. And he looks like a bank manager, doesn't he? Yeah. Um, but he's my hero. And yet, he doesn't rip off his glasses and rip off his shirt and underneath his Superman outfit. Yeah? He was just a bank manager with a vision. And why is he my hero? I'll give you a story. In 1981, I was working in an organization where they gave me four out of ten on my appraisal. And they told me all about my weaknesses. And I remember one of the bosses telling me that I would never get anywhere in life. That's exactly what he told me. And I also remember going home at night, being very miserable. And one night, I actually found myself crying in the chair. And that was a really, really fantastic lesson. Because after I stopped crying, I thought, if ever I become a manager in an organization, I never ever want someone going home and crying about work. And in 1985, four years later, just four years later, I joined Visa as a cash dispenser technician. And after nine months, for various reasons, they sacked my boss. And they called me in the office and they said, John, we want you to set up the Visa International Cash Dispenser Network across Europe, Middle East, Africa. And I just looked at them and I didn't quite say it, but it was, you are nuts. You know, I'm a cash dispenser engineer technician. And they said, we think you can do it. We really think you can do it. And we did. We did do it. It took us three years of getting it up and running, and it grew, and it's huge now. But this man actually started it. He started the organization that could look at someone four years before was getting really bad results. And they could look at them and say, we believe in you. He made an SF organization before we even knew what SF was. Here's a quote from his. Just see if you can see some SF in this. Without question, the most abundant, least expensive, most underused, and constantly abused resource in the world is human ingenuity. The source of that abuse is mechanistic organizations. That's from his book, which I highly recommend, one from many, The Story of Visa. This was a bank manager who worked in mechanistic organizations, but actually believed totally that all organizations should be organic in their makeup. And he had these ideas. He had no idea how he was going to put that into action. But one day, he was involved in something called Bank of America, and his belief was the source of all our problems today come from the gap between how we think and how nature works. And Nora, I really didn't just put this in because you're here today. That's in his book. Because he believed in this organic ideal. This is a man with no university education whatsoever. He did the filthiest jobs in the world before he became a bank manager. But this was, he really related to Bateson's ideas. So, how did he start Visa? He was a bank manager, he was working, he was a licensee of Bank America, with their Bank America program, which some of you may remember, from many years ago. It was a marketing sensation. It was brilliant. They licensed it to hundreds of other banks 
It was an operational disaster. The banks were losing millions and millions of dollars. And we look back now and we think, how on earth could banks lose money? <laughs> how on earth could banks lose money? But they do, and they did. And they were hemorrhaging money. They were losing lots of money. And D. Hock was with one of these banks. And he said, we've got to do something about this. And they said, great, you do something about it. So he took four people off to a hotel somewhere in California. And he said, we're going to come up with an idea for a new kind of organization. And what he said was, another bit of solution focus for you. What if we set aside all discussion of the problems of the Bank America system as it was, as it is, and as we fear it might be, and immersed ourselves in how it ought to be. And after a couple of days of trying to work out typical mechanistic organizations, they came up with an idea of doing it differently. And their focus was to create the world's premier system for the exchange of value. That was his real purpose in life. <laughs> to create the world's premier system for the exchange of value, but with a different type of organisation. And they came up with these principles. Five guys in a hotel in California, all bank managers. Distributed ownership. If you were a member, you had the right to participate. It was $80,000 up until 2012 when I last finished consulting with Visa and consulting with banks. They were paying just $80,000 to join the biggest networked organization in the world. That's peanuts. Trust me, it's peanuts. But it gave them the right to participate. Self-organizing is a right. At the beginning they said, anyone, anywhere can start doing something. And if they can get support from other people, they can get on and do it. And that's what they allowed. Distributed power. He said, let's get power out as far as we can from the center and give anyone, anywhere the right to start doing things. Distributed governments, he was really scared of the big banks. He wanted the small banks to have some power as well. So they set it up so there was no domination by the big banks. As much as the big banks tried, there was no domination by the big banks. For me, his big challenge though was, how do you take banks who compete with each other in the marketplace who have this self-interest, they all out to make money, how do you get them to cooperate? And he had to get them to cooperate by persuading them that if they work together as a community, they could create something hugely bigger than they could by working on themselves, by working on themselves. He called that the community interest. He actually persuaded Bank America to give away their license to this idea for free. Because he said to them, they would make so much more money by serving the community. And he was right. They became the biggest gainers in 2008 when they sold out. So we look at those principles of the Visa organization, and I'd like to ask you, do you recognize any organization that sounds a bit like that? Yeah? The sole organization. Distributed ownership? Well, no one owns it, do they? Yeah? The right to participate? You're all here today. Anyone can turn up. I think I was talking to a lady, excuse me, I can't remember your name, but she said she found it on the internet and she came along. Yeah? It's your right to participate. Self-organizing is a right. In 2016, Bucharest, Petro and her colleagues setting up a sole world in Bucharest. We've got Suzanne and her colleagues in Vienna in 2016 with Dash, we've got Mark and Jenny turn around and go, oh, they're not doing it in Rome, let's set it up in Liverpool. Yeah? Self-organizing is a right. They didn't go and say to someone, please, can we do this? They just did it. Yeah? This is the sole organization, and it's fantastic. And I've organized two of these myself. What a fantastic organization has been set up. And Paul will excuse the question mark at the end. Yeah? Yes, it's a fantastic organization. It is a brilliant, brilliant organization that has
has got us to here. But there's a question mark on the end here. And that question mark is because I think we can do more. I think we can achieve more. This is what I'd like to see us achieve. SF at the heart of all organisations. And why do I want to see this? Because I don't want to see people going home crying at the end of the day. I want people to go home laughing and saying what a fantastic day they've had at work and how they love their job and how they love the people they work with. SF at the heart of all organisations. But to do that, we've got to do a few things. What Dean Hopp recognised was that they had the principles, but he also added some structure. It wasn't huge structure. Some of you, how many, how many people do you think Visa employ in the world? The Visa organisation, how many people do you think they employ? Just give me some ideas. 30,000. 30,000? 250,000? 5,000. Actually, it's about 10,000 these days. When I left, it was about 7,000 people. The Royal Mail in Britain has 160,000 people. Yeah? Say again? And it's still late. Yeah, okay. Visa can move a bit of information around the world in 1.5 seconds. It takes it six weeks to get a letter to you in Milton Keynes. Too. Okay, so what he said was we've got to have some structure to this as well as these principles. So what are the lessons we can learn from Visa? He had a clear purpose. He had a clear purpose to create the best value exchange. Yeah? We really should have a clear purpose of driving SF to the heart of organisations. Whatever you want to say it, however you want to say it, this is my way of saying it. We should use the resources of this fantastic network. We've got a brilliant network, you know, not all around the globe, but in the huge part of the globe. We've got a network of people that we could call on to push SF to the heart of organisations. And all of you here today, probably have got a number of contacts in organisations. <clears throat> How many of you here today, though, actually work as a salaried employee of an organisation, of a larger organisation? Yeah, so we've got two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we've got about 10%. If you go to Japan, when I went to Japan, I think out of 120 people, they had 100 people from organisations, all proudly telling each other, about how fantastic their organisation was now they were using SF. Yeah. That's the difference. We can use our network to drive further into organisations. Creating community value. If you look at it, actually, we're all kind of individuals competing with each other. But actually, we haven't created a cake anywhere near big enough to compete about. We need to create a huge, huge cake and all of us get a big slice of it. And use what is there. I'm not talking about let's get rid of anything. I think Seoul is brilliant and let's keep doing it. Yeah, let's keep doing these Seoul World Conferences wherever we want to do it. And things like the SF List I think is one of the best resources I've ever seen and used. Five minutes after posting you get four replies telling you how you can do something. It's just, you know, there's so many good things out there, let's not lose them. The Interaction Journal. Let's keep it, it's a fantastic journal. Why would we want to lose it? So I'm not talking about getting rid of what works. All I'm saying is we can add a little bit of organisation to what is there. I also think embracing the wider community is really important, and this is where Visa actually fell down. I hope their lawyers aren't listening to this, but this is where I believe they fell down. It takes four groups to run a payment system. You need card holders, you need card issuers, you need the banks to sign up merchants to accept transactions, you need the merchants. You also need a system in between that Visa provides, but you need those four things. And what Visa didn't really concentrate or focus on was the merchants. 
And that came back to bite them. Walmart took them to court $2 billion. Lawsuit and visa lost. And then everybody's coming in saying, oh yeah, we want a piece of that, we want a piece of that. So they had trust suits, they were antitrust suits coming with lots of merchants all getting together. Yeah? Everybody's saying, these are, we don't like you from a merchant point of view. That to me is because they didn't respect the merchants and what they brought. And I think that's something we need to make sure of in SF. And it has been mentioned today, when we talk about the therapist side of things, we've got huge amounts we can learn from the therapist. When I watch Chris Iveson in action, I'm in awe. Yeah, and there's others like him. And I think it's really important that we don't become separate from the therapist. We're all SF. We all learn from each other. So that's it. I think we've got to embrace the wider community. But we've got to create a structure that's going to get us into organizations in a big way. The heartbeat. This is actually from D Hop. He called it the heartbeat. He said that even in nature, yeah, there's control. The heartbeat is controlled by something in nature. So that was his version of control. It was the heartbeat. So last November, a group of people, about 10 people, got together and just said, you know, we need to do something different. If we're going to get into organizations, we need to do something different. So we set up ASFIO, the Association for Solution Focus in Organizations. Compared with Visa, it's a lousy brand name. Okay? It is not sexy, is it? It doesn't roll off the tongue. We found a few ways to turn it into songs, and we'll probably demonstrate that tomorrow. But, A-S-F-I-O. So, um, that came out of Rabir. Thank you, Anton. Um, so we've got it. We've even got a logo, which I ran up in, this was worth millions. I ran it up in five minutes on my computer. Yeah, just to get us started. This was all about getting us started. So we set up a company in the UK, because it's really easy to set up companies in the UK. And we built articles around those principles that we're talking about. So it's a membership owned company. No one person owns it. It's owned by all its members. There is no profit any profit goes back to the company to grow solution focus. It is not about making money. And we've got a board. And you can see some of the people here today, and sadly some, not all of them could. We've got Kath in America, we've got Lillian in Singapore, we've got people from Belgium, we've got Suzanne from Austria, we've got people from the UK, and we've got people from different types of jobs. David Shackett is an expert on Lean. We have a brilliant book on Lean and SF. Yeah? We've got a group of people who are really keen to get out there and really drive SF into organisations. And we don't want to be... I, actually, I hate the word board because it makes it sound so bureaucratic and pompous. Yeah? So, see if we can come up with a different name for that. But, what we want is a board that's going to drive this forward. SF at the heart of all organisations, and that might change tomorrow. You know, that was just me saying that. They may decide that they want something different. We've got to increase the number of people in companies. These are our focus areas. We've got to add value for members and make it worthwhile for all of you to join this organisation, along with 90 people who have already joined. We've got to inspire young people into SF. If you look around this room with the best women in the world, I know you're all young. Yeah? But we need some few younger people. Yeah? And younger people don't join because it's all worthy and worthwhile. They join because we inspire them. And we've got to really inspire younger people to come in and join us. And we've got to, as I've said, we've got to use the resources we have and we've got to increase the number of chapters. We've got great chapters in the UK, in Germany, in Singapore, in Finland. But we need chapters elsewhere as well, in places like Sweden, in the Netherlands or the Low Countries, whatever we want to call it. Yeah? So we need more chapters. And what that means is, we've got a ball, but we need to tap into this wider network that we've got. And just look around the room. 
at the fantastic skills and knowledge and resources that we have got in this room. And now think of all the people who aren't in this room, who are on Practify. Yeah? And this wonderful idea of getting this online, which I'm gonna, I'm just so busy, I haven't got onto it yet, but I'm going to get onto that, because I just, I just thought, this is fantastic, what a great idea. Because we can enhance SF learning. We've got to improve what people are thinking about SF and how they're using SF. That doesn't mean that we've got to go to the Six Sigma people and say you're wrong. It means we've got to go to the Six Sigma people, like Sue is doing, and say, actually, you're doing a fantastic job, and organisations love you, and we think we can help you make it even better. Because that's the only way we're going to get into organisations. And going to the lean people, who again are highly respected by organisations, and do the same thing. So we've got to enhance SF learning, but we've got to do it in a very inclusive way. So that's what we're trying to set up. And in the next 10 minutes, yep, we're going to have the first AGM of ASFIO. And we invite you all to come. You don't have to be a member. Not being a member means you can't vote, but actually we haven't got any votes anyway, so it doesn't matter. So please come along, just see what we're talking about, see what we're doing. We're appointing the board officially. We're going to look at the finances and we're just going to talk about where the hell can we take this? Because I have no idea where it's going, but it's going to be fun going there. That's really one of the big things with the board. We want to make it fun and we want to make it enjoyable. So, the power, purpose, principles of people develop Visa into what it is today. That's what Devox said. The power, purpose, principles of people can take SF into the heart of organisations. We can do this. It's a big challenge. There's a lot to do. But we've got such a fantastic group of people. I'm just in awe of some of the people we've got in this room. It's just amazing the power that we've got in this room. So let's share and enhance that purpose of getting into the heart of organisations. Oh. Let's follow those principles with that heartbeat, just adding that little bit of structure and find let's come together. Okay? Right now. Thank you very much.